And now on to West Asia. Yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was in the hospital. He was getting a surgery to fit a pacemaker. Normally, you would take a few days off after an operation like that, but not Netanyahu. He could not afford to do that. So he went straight from the hospital to the parliament. Why? Because today, Israel is voting on a set of controversial judicial reforms. It has already approved a key clause. Now, these are reforms that Netanyahu has been pushing for months and reforms that have triggered Israel's biggest protests in the country's history. So what are these reforms about? The judiciary. The Israeli government wants to change how the judiciary functions. They think the courts are too powerful, so they want to curb that power. But the people of Israel are having none of it. They say such a move would undermine Israel's democracy. So thousands of people have been protesting since the beginning of this year. We're nearly halfway through the year. But the protests have not stopped. In fact, they've just intensified. We are here today fighting for our democracy in a non-violent way. We are protecting our country from dictatorship. We will not give up until we are victorious. I came here to protest against uh, the dictatorship that's becoming of my country. And I came to Jerusalem because this is the most important city of the country and I want my country to continue living under dem a democracy. The scenes playing out in Israel are truly dramatic. Thousands are out on the streets, protests in every major city, scuffles with the police and a call to save democracy. Netanyahu is the longest serving prime minister of this country. He's faced a lot of protests in his career, but things have never been this bad. That's because some sections of the Israeli society usually never involve themselves in politics. But this time, even they are protesting. I'm talking about the likes of tech executives, former politicians, and most importantly, the Israeli army. The military is often known as Israel's backbone, the most powerful force in all of West Asia. They fight battles for the state, but this time, they're fighting against the state. The judicial reforms have deeply divided the Israeli army. The reservists say they will not show up for duty if these reforms are passed. And this includes fighter pilots and members of the intelligence. And here's something you must know. Military service in Israel is compulsory. All citizens above the age of 18 must serve at least for three years. But many continue to be in reserve duty for much longer. So these reserve forces are a critical resource. They're an important backup for the regular army of Israel. If the reservists do not show up, it would shake up the entire system. And are they serious about not showing up? Well, that too is a matter of debate. Many believe these are just threats. But the images tell another story. We were trying to do our best in order to protect democracy in our country. This seems to be the universal sentiment. People from every section of the society are protesting. But the Prime Minister remains adamant. He wants to go forward with the reform. And we'll tell you the reason why. Netanyahu came to power in December last year. But his party did not have a majority. So he formed a coalition government. And this is not new in Israel. Every government in the country has been a coalition government. No party has one simple majority in the history of Israel. So Netanyahu stitched a coalition. And he wasn't spoiled for choice. In order to come to power, he tied up with a group of radical right-wing parties. It gave him the prime minister's title. But this alliance is now coming back to bite him. Netanyahu's allies insist on this reform. If he fails to push it, they've threatened to pull support. So the Prime Minister is caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. With the reforms, he loses public support. Without the reforms, he loses coalition support. So he wants them passed to remain in power. He also faces major corruption charges. Curbing the power of the courts will help him in that case too. So it's his dare against the political odds. But will it work? Benjamin Netanyahu rose to power as the protector of Israeli patriotism. It's something he talks about a lot. But the army is seen as the biggest symbol of patriotism in Israel. And if the same army opposes the reforms, it could spiral into a national security situation. Will that finally force Netanyahu to backtrack? By the looks of it, not yet.